Okay. Like I'll name names out of this. They'll never watch this. Mm-hmm. But one of my coworkers, they were talking about like an experience. And this guy that he was helping was like gassing this my coworker up. Yeah. Like he was like saying, Oh, you're so cool, you're suave, you know what you're doing, you mm-hmm. look good, blah, blah, blah. And after he leaves, he's like, I don't know what he saw. He's like, Oh, you look so good. Like, sir, I shit my pants every day. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? Yo, yo, welcome to the Joystick Show. Joey's on his phone. Got your ass. Hey, attention, Damn, bitch. Right. You got. God, bro. Joey's getting written up right now. Yo, real right. quick, we just want to run through this so fast, bro. Mm. Bro, bro, you could like this episode. Bro. You could subscribe bro. if you're feeling like it, you know. Bro. And you can just sit in your seat. You can strap on <laughs> and watch the show. It's a little, it's a little running gag here. Back it you. up, back in, and let me begin. Yep. Sometimes you gotta back that ass up and let that coochie breathe. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Drake. Very important. Uh, if you want to know what we're actually discussing on this stupid episode, show that shit. Look at that! Wow! Look at that! Look at that! You see that? What do you think about this? Perhaps that? I hope your finger's slightly off and all. This is my. Like... This is like my Tucker Carlson impression. <laughs> what are we talking about? It's gone. It's not here anymore. Let's continue. All right. Uh, fucking so many, so many routes we could go. Yeah. So many threads that can be pulled. So many. Uh, I mean, it's like a multiverse of some kind. Yeah. Who wants to pull the thread? Look, I'm, it's right out yeah. there. Somebody pull it. I'll pull mine. Joey pulled it. Oh my god. <clears throat> like that. There we go. I hated uh, that by the way. That sucked. <laughs> um, I'm gonna beat you up live mm-hmm. on the podcast at the end of the episode. Remember? Now that? I okay. forgot the thread, asshole. Wow. Now we're really gonna beat you up at no, the end of the episode. I remembered it. Okay. <laughs> um. Now we're now we're really gonna beat you up. At the yeah, end we're of the just episode. gonna beat you up after the podcast. All right. Um, my girlfriend got into Fortnite recently. Like Whoa. she was like, oh, I want to, I want to try it. Uh-huh. So, uh, she was trying and mm-hmm. actually managed to do pretty all right. So now, uh, she downloaded it on her account and, uh, she's really hyped about this new season, which right now it's uh, Greek mythology and she's loving that shit. She's like, this is awesome. And she wants to get the Medusa skin, uh-huh. but to get the Medusa skin, you need to be like level 46. Gotcha. And I love my girl, but it's it's kind of hard for her to get up there at the moment. She's so, not level forty six. Yeah, she's not nowhere near forty six right now. So um, I have her account on my PlayStation. I jump on and I like grind for her a little bit, so it helps her out. So I've sent all you guys her PSN friend request, and you could be a close friend to her. I mean, it's listen, me. I will, actually me. I'll happily help boost her. I'm down. I think we can make that. That we all we all just take turns. And be like, I got top three, got 18 kills, pretty Bro, good. We, we could make that content, you know? Like, she could just play from home, you, me, or at my house, and we'll just title it Helping Boost Joey's Girlfriend yeah. from Bobby's <laughs> from House, Bobby's bro. House, there go. yeah. We're going to just boost oh, her man. up. Fucking, yeah, we could wipe out Tomato Town. My friend just got downed. I revived him, now we're heading <laughs> southbound. I hate this. Uh, I, had to, I had to pull really up the lyrics. Want to I fucking forgot. Chug Jug with you. We'll be Fortnite gamers. <laughs> That like, song slaps, so that's the stupid part of that. The that, stupid part of that song is that it's as dumb as it is, you managed to sing it and know some of the words. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a jam. Yeah, I don't know. It's a slap. So I'm down. I mean, for what it's worth, I haven't even played season two, but it does look really cool with all the, the, the gods and, and, and mythological you got stuff wings they put and stuff. You have the wings? Of I don't curse. like those that much. Why? He's cheap? Apparently, they're not good. Not a lot of people use them. I use them. They're good getaway. And you get a high vantage point. Uh, these things are a lot more popular this season, apparently. Shockwaves, just to get away fast and stuff like that. I've always used them. Mm-hmm. But anyway, fucking shout outs to Fork Knife. Didn't know we were yeah. starting that. It's an interesting. I did one. not. I did not. Honestly, Have I, we talked about Fork Knife. If I had the, before? if I had the gambling odds on what the first of topic. what the first topic was, I would have not picked that. Yeah, yeah. I and that's that. a good segue. Is it into uh, one of the so, best ga- into one of the best gambling events of the century happening right now? <laughs> what what are we looking at? Uh, the light. Oh yeah, that's probably a good thing to mention. Is there a fly? It, no, there's no fly. Uh, th- our light is broken, and I did a what I'd like to think was a decent enough taping job. Mm-hmm. But if it collapses midway through the podcast. That's always fun, you know. Make a we'll make like a little that. gag out of it, and it won't hurt me. Okay? I feel like that's how we end it. We just punch that shit down yeah. like a fucking. Pinata. How about we podcast until the light falls? <laughs> but like anyway, how's gambling going? Uh, gambling's going pretty well. I have a gamble on this uh, on this, on this match madness going March on right behind now? me match right now. Uh, to break down everyone for March Madness, right? Sixty-four teams, actually now sixty-eight teams. 
by the time you're watching it, it will be the Sweet 16, mm. which is the third round. Mm -hmm. They have a cool name for it because it's impressive just to get into the tournament. So it's impressive yeah. to, uh, you know, also, you know, so it's like we made it to the Elite Eight, you know. For sure, for sure. You know, but uh, yeah, um, a bunch of money on the first uh, round because uh, – you bet the underdog, underdogs win. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite story is a 25-year-old graduate student who decided to score 35 points in a game wow. in one of the biggest upsets. The fuck is he studying? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but there was a meme that was going around literally the first day of the tournament. Like, literally, someone's going to lose a bet because a fucking future accountant is literally just going to pop oh, off. So shout outs to Mr. Jack Goldkey. That's fire. Who decided who to score you? 35 points. I think and I heard that name earlier today. Yeah. He's, uh, he was on like every podcast. Not ours, but uh, you know. Someday. One day. We'll get him next week when he's actually an accountant and not yeah, right. in the... <laughs> not in the sweet Not 16. in the... Nah, he lost already. But uh, you know, hey. Yeah, we'll that's see. what happens. Literally the first round, there's like eight upsets. And then the second round is all of those teams get rocked because they basically blew their load on the first game and winning. That reminded me of, uh, of the NBA finals from two or three years ago when it was the Suns and the Bucks because yeah. when that was going on and Mikhail Bridges and Cam Thomas were, or Cam Johnson were still on the Suns mm -hmm. Cam Johnson at the time was in the process of getting his master's degree while he was playing in the finals at the same nice. time which is fucking pretty dope flex That's dope that is pretty yeah. dope. That is pretty dope. But everyone at home, be safe out there uh, with the gambling. Because mm -hmm. uh, shit goes crazy in March. Because it's it's almost madness. Right? Yeah. And uh, I realized that like I still don't know where any of these fucking colleges are. You know what I mean? All of the best colleges historically, usually in like, you know in basketball mm -hmm. they'll be the college obviously it's like montana state yeah where the fuck is gonzaga i don't even right? know where it is gonzaga marquette Puts them on villanova the that one so I know. uh duquesne nope you know like uh, there's literally colleges that have like it's fucking lamar <laughs> you know like that we really named the college there's, there's the grand canyon one yeah, which i would assume is arizona oh yeah 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 there's some that are like the whole rio grande valley like oh okay nice nice you really Atlantis. there's miami which is in ohio there's no ohio in miami though the, the forest fuck? The Miami Indians are from Ohio. All right, yeah, that, yeah. Make, that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But university, not, not not to be mistaken with the University of Miami, which is in Miami. Yeah, yeah. That's too much. Uh, it, 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 they probably get mad hype though, like yeah, don't cook. Yeah, and then and then they want you to go to college, mm -hmm. and they can't even fucking get that shit together. That yeah. should be your sign. Uh, tonight, one of my uh, sleeper picks is I hope Yale makes it far. They're, they're gonna like, be sleeping. They're then the other team is gonna win. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I know sports. But yeah, um, everyone look out. Everyone support no! your favorite. Uh, scared me. I'm still upset that uh, St. John's was supposed to make it this year, and they oh, did yeah. not. Yeah. I know where that one is. Yeah. Queens. Yes, yeah, yeah, the hometown. Yep, yep. Yeah. Home Saint. Shout out to John. I don't know what he did or what he does. He's a saint. Yo, shout out to shout out to all the saints. Oh, is it that one? I think so. I don't know. Do you, do you guys know the ch the the saint of the church that's by my house or my, used to be by my it's house? It's Saint no. Dylan Willis. It was Saint Virgilius. Saint Virgilius. And uh, shout out to Saint Camillus as well. No, saint shout Camillus. out to Saint Genesius. All of these are made what up. What are these is, bro? They made they made up all. They they fucking saw Greek names and, and, and saint like, Cecilia. yeah, just add Shout out to end. Saint Martin de Porres. Because I saw a, a play about that this week. Just to shout out to Saint, shout out to Saint Ricky, uh, Stenicky, no. <laughs> Saint Ricky Martin, Saint Elizabeth, Saint, uh, uh, Saint Pierre, George Saint Pierre. Pray for us. Throw all, all right. the saints. <laughs> Throw all the saints. Shaw and the New Orleans Saints. The, the, um, um, <laughs> the fifty-two players. Uh, fucking, fucking, uh, Saint West. <laughs> what? Kanye's child. Oh, yeah. oh there you go. There you go. Fucking, shout out to Kanye. Yep. Yeah. Saint uh, Saint Martin. I think we're, I think we're Saint, done. Saint Albert. I think not the places, the islands, not the place, the people that they're based off of. I think know? I think we're done with the Saint Saints. Francisco. <laughs> last Saint one. Diego. Last, okay, last one. I don't know any other Saints. Has to be That's a really I'm good one. Um, these are all. None of these um, have been good. That's the thing. Um, Saint Brady. There you go. There we go. <laughs> Got it. All right. Fucking. I wanted to talk about something crazy. Something wild. Something I know about because YouTuber video SAS made it. Honestly, the internet blew instead. the fuck yeah, up. It, after it was this. everywhere. Not even yeah, YouTube. Yeah. It was Instagram. There, there's so many threads to be pulled from this one. Uh, to, to relate. Can we stop pulling threads? We're, we're pulling. Go ahead. Ah. I, I took this one. We're pulling threads all episode, baby. 
Uh, and that, Eat of it. course, is uh, I'm talking about the newest phenomenon, the newest docu series that hit TVs called Quiet on Set, uh, the dark side of children's television. Uh, pretty good four part docu series. I wish I could credit the directors who made it. I will throw their names up here. Bam! Woo! That's them. Those the people who made it. Uh, pretty good. I'll give my review, or rather my, my number rating later, like I typically do. Just want to talk a little bit about it and a little bit about what the documentary is about, you know? Uh, the documentary about... <laughs> terrible way to start. The documentary about... <laughs> the documentary about stuff. The video about the video, yeah. that is documentary. The documentary is about uh, specifically the dark side of Nickelodeon's television, which is going to be my first con right there. I wish the title was a little bit more specific because it's not just children's television, even though in the broader scheme of things, it does bring it light does, to what, yeah. it, what it's like to work for children in this industry. But I would have liked if it was a little bit more specific towards Nickelodeon, since it's all, in all fairness, that's all. Yeah, it's, it's, this, it's this, very this focused. Docu- yeah, it's all it's a very covers. focused documentary. A uh, couple Disney Channel mentions here and there, but not they don't really talk about the production of those mm-hmm. shows or anything that happened because they don't know, right? Um, so the way that this show is set up is like every it kind of goes in like a chronological order where in the first episode we are watching kind of like how production was behind the scenes on shows like all that you know mm-hmm. in the second episode is that that's where it starts to lead into the amanda show and we hear like a lot about amanda Bynes and things of that nature but uh, i'm gonna get into like what i'll what i think is a con for me with this show and that is that the show very heavily focuses on dan schneider who is basically nickelodeon's kevin feige at one point like, yeah. this guy was just pumping out children's he made everything that he made you know, every show you like on nickelodeon literally if like from the Fire. late 90s to the late 2010s pretty much any popular uh, live action, live action. Yeah, he didn't make spongebob yeah he did iCarly, drake and josh victorious the amanda show he you know did production work on all that he did zoe 101 and a lot more right so regardless this guy uh, regardless of this guy's talent and creativity he did create a very toxic work environment that involved gender discrimination, uh, racial discrimination, sexual harassment in the workplace. People quoted him as having slightly inappropriate relationships with some of the younger people on set, yada, 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 right? Right off the bat, there are people that this documentary talks about that make Dan Schneider look like a Boy Scout, you know? And that's not to make too much of a joke about it, but there are people who do dastardly fucking shit that, oh, they, I that mean, they highlight. You there's know? there's literal, like, people in prison, and exactly. then there's Dan Schneider. Yeah. But, like, this is, this is a big difference. So what I guess two. I'm trying to say is, absolutely, I get it. The documentary technically should be centered around him since he was the one who sort of let this workplace environment happen in the first place, right? But I find it interesting that, like, they try to keep going back to Dan as being this, 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 this. But it almost feels like he, there's two sides to him, which they also reference heavily. Oh, of course. A lot of people is. say that there was the Dan Schneider who was happy and loving and funny on, on set with the cast. And everybody says there's the other side that was violent and abrasive oh, I mean, and that's, mean. Yeah, and, yeah, I mean, that's how, like, sociopath type people work exactly. is that it's, like, all a front. So it's, like, a lot of that's the time. That's what it sounds like. There a lot people. of the time, it's a good experience. Yeah. You know, it's, like, you're meeting the person. It's nice. But then there's all this whole toxic side and uh which, and hide shit yeah and that'll lead me into like a, a a genuine pro that i had in the show and that is that the documentary is fairly unbiased mm. uh it gives every single person that's featured the opportunity to speak their unbiased opinion of their experiences <clears throat> on the set some people had you know uh admittedly terrible times you know other people in their honest opinions were just like i was happy to be there like i had a great time some people are are very Mm -hmm. aware of the privilege that they were given like you know i had a good time but i you know notice now in my adult life that some of my co-workers didn't get that same treatment and stuff so i like the unbiased takes everybody gets to say their opinion there's Mm -hmm. even some people in the documentary who speak relatively highly of dan schneider and i think that's fair that everybody gets to speak that truth and it's not like an attack on one person so to speak right Uh, and even to further that, they even put in tidbits, especially towards the end of episodes, where it's almost like uh, if they if there were time for people who watched it who wanted to respond to it, Dan Schneider included, they actually put his response at the end of the episode. So they almost give him a chance. Granted, it's not an interview, but a chance to sort of like speak his mind and quote unquote defend himself or apologize, which he chose to do. Uh, regardless, show is very gripping. It's very captivating. Uh, the third episode is kind of like the show's big twist and kind of its selling point. And that's the fact that in the early 2000s, a dialogue coach who once worked with Leonardo DiCaprio and was known as being very, very successful in Hollywood, 
uh, was arrested and charged with molestation of a minor in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. The minor up until this documentary was left unnamed because they were a minor at the time of it. Mm -hmm. And it was revealed in the documentary that it was in fact Drake Bell Mm -hmm. from Drake and Josh. Yeah. Huge shockwave, right? Like big time. That interview, that episode in general is crazy, right? Like, I'm not going to get detailed about it. If you want to watch it on your own, you can. But even Drake says, you know, he doesn't get too specific. He just basically says the worst things that you could imagine somebody doing to somebody in that way. That's what happened. And when you see the the, the legal documents and you see what he was charged with, yeah, terrible shit. But point is, uh, getting to see Drake kind of finally talk about it publicly, mm-hmm. talk about the experience of it, the story of how it happened – but also to get his father's experience and father's viewpoint was incredible. I told Jose, Jose and I even watched a little bit about it. And like, if you watch this documentary and you watch that episode in specific, mm-hmm. Drake Bell's dad is like a fucking hero. Oh, for And yeah. he didn't, he wasn't even able to stop it, but he did everything he possibly could. And in fact, in the opposite light, a lot of people were painting Drake's mom to be the villain because of how just uh, aloof she was to the whole situation. Even when her husband told him, told her rather never leave him around with brian peck this like crazy person and she still let him alone and it happened Mm -hmm. so regardless shout out to drake bell shout out to his dad and last thing i'll say about drake is kind of on the take of the unbiased thing they even kind of give him an opportunity to talk about his life and his life choices after the fact and he brings light to his self-destructive behaviors and what he's doing to rectify that Mm -hmm. and saying that uh he he said the same thing he said recently about how like the media kind of spun it and portrayed it in a different way but regardless he's trying to do better and stuff like that and i thought that was cool too right it's Mm -hmm. that's kind of a full circle thing at the end of the day I just hope everybody gets better. I hope everybody learns from the experience. But as a show, as a series, uh, fucking great watch. Super digestible. Lots of stuff to take in. It's especially if you watched any Nickelodeon shows from that era, especially the shows that were featured. Mm-hmm. Do yourself a favor. Check it out. In terms of documentary, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's really, really good. Okay. And the last thing I just wanted to mention, because I wanted to say it on the podcast, I totally forgot. That guy brian peck who was charged and uh arrested with those crimes against drake they made a mention that earlier in the documentary he had invited a bunch of the kids and their families to his house for a party and while they were there he was showing off p- places in his house and one of the the kids or now adults who was talking about his experience said that his house had a lot of weird rooms in it and one of the rooms was completely devoted and themed in the style of planet of the apes so it had like you know framed gorilla posters and shit like that all over but there was one thing in the room that wasn't related to planet of the apes and that was a giant painting of a sad clown and when the kid asked him what it was brian got excited took off the painting and showed the back and it was signed and said uh to brian wish you all the best in life john wayne gacy and you found out that not only did this fucking crazy person get a signed portrait, self-portrait from that's John Wayne making, Gacy. That's giving me chills. He was pen pals with him in prison and had stacks of letters oh that he had sent Oh my God. That's, the, 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 this, I, I mean, that's, that's what makes chills. it. If, I'm scared to move If right that's now. not red flag numero fucking uno, come the fuck on. Yeah. Like, just wanted to share that. that, that it's, that's crazy. It's yeah. pretty wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's pretty terrifying. Crazy. Right? Right? That's terrifying. And that, guy, and that guy's around your kid every day. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. even, cra- even crazier about that, I told Jose that this part is nuts. Uh, there, there's a part where they- More inter- nuts than what you <laughs> just Not said. that part, but they Yo, have- Yo, that shit's fucking crazy, yeah. man. No, fucking uh, uh, Drake's dad, they interview him and he kind of gets emotional because he talks and he's like saying, I saw what he was doing around Drake, the way he talked to him and touched him. And he said, he was like, he would start with an arm around his shoulder and the next thing you know, he'd run it down and have it on his elbow and grab his forearm and stuff like that. And he said- uh, somebody had sent me a video of him doing it in like a behind the scenes clip with Leonardo DiCaprio on Growing Pains when he was like 15 and they play the clip on the interview and he's doing the exact same thing that Drake Bell's dad is doing to Leonardo DiCaprio and it's fucking weird to watch because he's clearly like a 40 year old guy and yeah. he's touching him like it's his girlfriend it's like what the hell but fucking shout out to Drake's dad for seeing the signs mm-hmm. he also told people at Nickelodeon and they gaslit him and they told him oh Brian's gay don't worry He's not into that or whatever, something like that. You're just being homophobic. And he was like, okay. Uh, Fucking shout out. I mean, they're right. He is gay. I mean, yeah, but. Not, not, not like. Shout out to Nickelodeon, man. Yeah. Fucking weird. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
does and, it go in, does it go into like the the documentary does it go into like the old like 90s early 2000s stuff with like the the seminars and shit like that or does it mainly focus on like the drake part what do you mean the seminars so like there was a guy that dan schneider used to run with back in the day in like the like 90s and early 2000s Mm -hmm. and they basically set up like these like work these like acting camps but they were all like they would just take photos of minors and shit oh wow no they don't they didn't talk about that at all Mm -hmm. that's crazy has nickelodeon said anything about the documentary yeah yeah yeah. um sorry Pretty much, they were just like they 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 said that they work. They've actually played that disclaimer at the end of every episode, and I, I should remember it. But they said something to the degree of like they apologize for the experiences that these people endured while they worked under Nickelodeon, and that they assure people that they work tirelessly to make sure that the the workplace environment now is much different. Something along those lines, you know, corporate shit. Yeah. And for what it's worth, I'd like to believe that it's better now. I don't believe I, it's much better, but I don't think it's as terrible. You know, there's still a lot of problems to be addressed. Mm-hmm. But, um. Yeah, it's, it's Would pretty. Would that go it's to see for all children's programs or strictly Nickelodeons? I mean, that's the funny thing. That's kind of the question this is bringing up now. Like a lot of people are kind of saying that whole spiel of like, well, if this was happening at Nickelodeon, what the fuck was going on at Disney Channel? Well, it's stuff like that. well, it's any profession where there's children involved. Yeah, exactly. Sadly, it's literally teachers, like gym and like uh, ballerina coaches and shit, like oh, all yeah. of that. You want to hear another juicy thing? Like, that's thing? literally all, like, you, you know. You want to hear uh, another juicy thing? Red flags. Uh, when Drake Bell went to court against that guy, Brian Peck, he made it, mm-hmm. he was talking about the experience. He said, back then, you know, it wasn't like TMZ or the media was that big of a deal. So, you know, when I got out of the car, it wasn't like people were, had cameras everywhere, blah, blah, blah. But he said when he went inside of the courtroom, he was flabbergasted because on his side of the court, it was him, his mom, and his brother. And on Brian Peck's side of the court, it was fully full of people who he got to come in and support him from Hollywood and stuff like that. He was like, I won't name names, but I remember seeing people's faces and just being like, you came to defend this crazy person that did this to me. Oh, and when it gets real juicy is Drake doesn't say anything. It's the doc. It's not technically not the documentarians. It's like an inside journalist that they were, that they interview. Yes. Those court documents are now made available. They're officially yeah, leaked. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So she has all of the letters that were personally signed and sent to the judge from famous people in support of brian peck who are they and there's some some names yeah like the, what are of course. the two biggest like actor names weirdly enough were james marsden mm-hmm. and taron killam who, uh, interesting who were showing support uh a lot of other people were like behind the scenes producers directing people but apparently one of the bigger names were uh i think the couple who had uh big producing credits for the sweet life of zach and cody who said like we would never expect this behavior somebody even said like the only way that brian could do this is he was tempted by drake 15 year old drake bell but fucking um at the he, at the end of the episode you find out that brian peck i think was in jail for 16 months and then when he got out got a job on the sweet life of zach and cody mm-hmm. so there's your happy yeah. there's your happy ending mm-hmm. so kids programming yep where do we go from here it is, uh... That makes me like low key really upset as a teacher. Oh like, no, I'm really upset. Jose and I were like, we could fuck this guy up right now. Disclaimer: We're not going. I to. mean, he lives very like, far away. Uh, like no, like disclaimer. Also, you guys have a lot of people to beat up. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be going yeah, down. We gotta start with. We gotta kill all of Hollywood. We, no, we gotta start with Dylan first. That's after the podcast. <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. That's live on the podcast, actually. That's how we end the episode. That's how we end the episode, end the episode. Exactly. with the ball dropping too. We still have time. We actually have a good amount of time. We'll change for me and be so wonderful it's not wonderful do the bells do the bells Dan Schneider. there you go it was beautiful on on note and everything that's great that's great where do we go from mm, here nice. fellas before i just start singing that song from ridge racer 4 didn't you have something to talk about dylan oh, oh you, had, you had a funny story oh, you said oh, dylan oh. has a funny story guys yeah oh. it's so funny oh. strap in strap oh. on <laughs> it's uh it's actually just like a quick quick little tidbit of uh-huh. my life of dylan's of quick tidbit my quick one of those play play the quick tidbit theme Woo! quick tidbit yeah what's a tidbit it's kind of like a schmear you know like a schmear poop the schmear poop schmear poop you know i feel like my life now that like i don't know i'm waiting for the time in my life and maybe this will never happen maybe this is just my brain and how it like processes things but my job right now, kind of, I feel like when I go into work, I am on the set of a workplace sitcom. Yeah. 
And I don't think that I'm wondering when in my life will I have a job that won't feel that way. Yeah. I like I, I look at my coworkers and I'm like, I don't even feel like bossing you around right now because I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm your boss. I feel like I'm just watching. Yeah. And laughing. Do you ever do the, uh, you ever do one of these? You ever do one of those? One of those <laughs> to the side? No. Yeah. I don't do that. Go, I, go do one. Just see how it feels. Right? I want to see how it Hold feels. Hold on. I'll say something. I'll say something stupid. Ready? Yeah, I bought I bought a dollar for for two dollars the other day. Yeah, and a schmear of poop. And a schmear of poop. Look at that. How does it feel? How does it feel? It feels pretty good, but I'd just rather do that to my coworker. <laughs> no, I have too much power. The with fuck? This. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, did you? It's like, did you give them feedback? Cause yeah, I was like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Yeah. yeah. But uh, literally, like every day, my coworkers will say uh, like six to eight things, and I'm like, that's funnier than like eight episodes of The Office. Yeah, Just yeah. write like what you said. Yeah. Like I'll name names out of this. They'll never watch this. Mm-hmm. But one of my coworkers, they were talking about like an experience, and this guy that he was helping was like gassing this my coworker up. Yeah. Like he was like saying, Oh, you're so cool, you're suave, you know what you're doing, you mm-hmm. look good, blah, blah, blah. And after he leaves, he's like, I don't know what he saw. He's like, Oh, you look so good. Like, sir, I shit my pants every day. <laughs> and I'm just like what? <laughs> Or like he <laughs> <laughs> or just so like the, honest yeah yeah like or that. just like it would just be like we'll all do that and just i love that idea like i kind of like i kind of like like i'm one of my favorite times at my job is when we have a good day like it's like really good we meet our sales goals and more things are vibing and someone comes in and then annoys us and we just like, like we're like fuck you you can leave <laughs> we're like or especially you don't, you don't need to sell you pants anymore bitch like literally or it's like people like for example like like for example i work at a place where where the stuff gets mailed to you. Mm-hmm. People don't like that. You yeah, know, yeah. some people like just when you want to walk out with the yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's like, hey, I yeah, I love them. I love yeah. these pants, right? Anyways, um I like it because people come in, they're like, You sell like a tie? And we're like, we sell ties. We can mail we can mail yeah. you a tie. And they're like, but I wanted it now. And I'm like, that's can't so, help you. like in my head, I'm just like, that fucking sucks. You know? Like everyone at like everyone included from management, which we don't have a manager, but yeah. everyone top down, I feel like in their head they have the what they're saying and what they're thinking, and we're all wanna say what the fuck we're thinking. Got you. Cause Just like I, a roulette wheel of I've I've heard I've heard terrible, I've heard good things, bad things, horrible things. Gotcha. At the end of the day, people are fucking stupid. Yeah, so just group bullying the guy you don't need to sell pants to is... is I like it. I dig it. it, it it's, it At least it, he has a good relation with his coworkers. It's, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I like two of my coworkers, you know, it's cool. I, I talk to very few... Yeah. They all aren't they all like old Italy aren't they like older kids. women though? Yeah. yeah i'm the only male and i'm younger and then uh most but we have this new co-worker how do you not vibe i vibe with them so hard i'd go to like i'd go to fucking drunk brunch with I'm them even, i'm not even gonna lie like, like middle-aged middle-aged chicken women, and that's waffles. my that's my demographic right there get lifted middle-aged up on women. the chair i'm i'm it's popular a man, with, it's a man. Dylan, it's can a t- Dylan can tell you i'm popular with middle-aged women on facebook that is the demo for me you I kidding mean, me one is constantly complaining about the immigrant problem that we have here send her my way I'll change her. I'll change her uh, opinion. Loki making me feel uncomfortable. It's like she's like these people, Ugh. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, okay. Joe, Joey's just, like, tell me, about Joe, it. Joey. I thought you were a good actor. You know, you know. Why? Because he'd be able to fit in with that. I want. I want Joey to. The, you want. You want, you want Joey Spanish. to be like a like a closet racist or not? Not closet racist. Uh. I would describe it. You wouldn't be that. You'd be concerned with the welfare of our city. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know. So what a I'm Karen. Like, yeah. Basically. Yeah. 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 For the kids. Yeah. You for know? the kids. For the, he's a teacher. That's like his big like go to. Gotcha, you know. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. the kids. Shout out to coworkers. Shout out to coworkers. Don't watch us. And uh, shout out to Dylan's uh, new workplace comedy. Yeah. Pantsing with the stars. There we go. Pantsing with the stars. There we go. We found one. We the, found I the thought. Show. I really thought it'd be like. We only. found one. How much minutes we have left? There's a lot of minutes. I I know what to talk about. Yeah, yeah like half our podcast. A, there's a show. <laughs> there's a sh- uh, movie that's really good called uh, Ricky Stenicky. <laughs> yeah, Late Night with the Devil. Oh yeah, did you watch it? Uh, I signed up for my free trial of Shutter, only to find out that the movie doesn't come out on Shutter till like April 12th. Oh, so we gotta wait. Mm. So 
We could also use it to talk about that other cool horror movie that's coming out, the uh, In a Violent Nature, yeah. which looks well, pretty I, sick. I, I thought Joey was about to review that movie. That no, didn't come I didn't out see yet. it. No, we haven't no, seen but it. But what I am gonna say is that I did look up a review about that movie, and they gave it not even a half. They just gave it half a star, and I was like, <laughs> "Holy shit!" Like, it was that bad. Wow. And it wasn't because the movie was bad. It was in protest because I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try drawing that. Half, half a star. Uh, th- there are three scenes in the movie that use AI art, mm. and they're the first movie to use AI art in a movie. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. So, the intro sign for their talk show host. The the movie's about a '70s talk show host, and he decides to have like an exorcism or like a discussion with someone who's possessed by the devil on live the show. on television live yeah. on television and the whole movie feels like yeah. a 70s talk show. think the end of the joker but with a the a possessed girl yeah and you're watching the whole movie yeah and uh yeah the opening the opening show is ai art the will be right back sign is ai art and a logo for their Halloween version of the show, like the the talk that mm, they're gonna have. That's annoying. AI yeah. art. That's that that annoys the shit out of me. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, fucking hire a graphic designer to just make that. You know what I mean? But, and it looks bad. Like Nicole was me and Nicole were looking at the AI art, and it's like a skeleton, like a spooky, scary, like skeleton kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. The pumpkins are off. The skeleton has like missing fingers, and Nicole was like. That's bad. Like, why did they okay for that to be in the movie? Granted, it's there for like a few seconds. I'm trying to see if I can find a, a picture of it. You can keep talking. Is it, it one of these? That one. This one? This actually looks like some shit you would see like when you open Adobe. Like when you open Adobe Illustrator, it's mm-hmm. like, check it out. But uh, if you zoom in on that skeleton, if you can, you see that it's the, the pumpkin's faces are weird. The, oh, yeah. The hands, the fingers are conjoined. Yep, yep. Yeah, the eye. The wow. eye. The Man, eye. That's, that's so stupid. I guess it deserves the half star, but I'll yeah. still give it a watch. I, was I, also, I told her I don't. I was just going to say, to bounce off that, I, I noticed that that other movie that's coming out, In a Violent Nature, do you know about this? No. So there's this movie coming out, also on Shudder, I believe, called In a Violent Nature, where it follows... I read the synopsis. It's very it's very sl- slashery. It's apparently uh, about a group of, of teens who are camping in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. Uh, you classic. Know, you know, the classic trope. They come across a burnt down like fire tower or radio tower in the woods, and a girl finds a locket and takes it. Uh, what she doesn't know is that somewhere in or, or like somebody died in that fire and their corpse resurrects from the tower to seek out the locket and take revenge on who took it and that's pretty much the synopsis of the movie and for all that's fair it's pre- it's basically like a new version of friday the 13th it's basically okay. what it's trying to be like but the big gimmick is that the protagonist of the movie is the serial killer and you see the entire film technically through his point of view. Uh, it's not first person, but the camera follows him. The camera's constantly behind him. In fact, it's more third person than anything. You're so constantly yeah. following him. It's more suspenseful as he's approaching yeah. the people who don't know he's there. Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently, early reviews gave it a 93% on Rotten nice. Tomatoes. That's amazing. Speaking. Take that with a grain of salt because I don't know how many people reviewed it, but that is the critical consensus on Rotten Tomatoes at the moment. I'm excited. I love anything Friday the 13th related. Yeah, I mean, fucking... Even their G Fuel, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I saw you posted that. I'm not really into, like, horror like that, but I will admit that in the past, like, decade or so, horror has gotten very fresh. Like, they've been doing a lot of new things. They have to. I you mean, know, especially, it, like, considering what the genre people is, like, kind of, like, coming with suspense out. and stuff, you have it, to. It was necessary, you know? And I still mm. think there's a lot <laughs> that can be done for horror, too. I feel like horror is still... It's either, it's either too pretentious or it's too campy. Very yeah, rarely is it in the middle, you know? Yeah, very rare. I, I 100% agree with you And I that. think it needs a little bit of both. Maybe a little bit more pretentious than campy, if I'm being fair. But at the end of the day, I feel like I can't speak too much about that because you're kind of the uh, mm-hmm. you're kind of the scary movie correspondent here, you know? I have a list of movies that I want to see that are creepy. Man, I really wish we could just, like, I could be like, and now we're going to throw it to Joey on the street. Our Halloween correspondent, and it's just you like in a mask. I feel like I feel like he'd Holding be like pumpkin. he would be in a spooky place. Like he'd be like, yeah, we're in this really dark cave. Yeah, mm, I'm uh, actually cold. We should do that next Halloween. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna throw it to our Halloween correspondent, and it's gonna be like a mid podcast sketch where Joey like interviews some kid about their candy, and the kid has nothing to do, wants nothing to do with you. You're just like get the fuck out of here. Yeah, 
and that that's gonna be pay me our, twenty bucks. Our five second Halloween correspondence. I love it. We're the Daily Show guys. We made it. <laughs> Matt Norton's like honestly it's like Joey he pans in the mic and he's like the fuck this is even a real microphone <laughs> bro what if uh, what if that's what we do with video essays on the joystick show they're just like little 15 minute correspondence segments like from the daily show we're like, uh, and now we're gonna swing it to Dylan who's gonna teach us about I actually thought about this how about this butter. there's a second joystick channel but it's like highbrow I don't know if I'm ready for that. Because it's like, the, like, what do we call team, it? I don't know, but like, like, like joystick noir, the or joystick some shit like network. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like, that sounds better. Yeah, something, something that's like advanced, you know. The the joystick public access forum. network. The, the forum. joystick forum. We gotta just make a funny acronym, you know. That's what we have the to do. JPP. The JPP. You down with JPP? You down with JPP? M O S O S S O L O. Can we not abbreviate shit? Like, I hate I, abbreviations. You guys are the ones abbreviating. I shit. hate I abbreviating. Have no idea what you're talking you about. You just abbreviated, abbreviated. You said abbreviate. Yeah. Oh, okay. So fucking. Mm-hmm. Why don't you stop it? Yeah. Okay. For real. Why don't you it? GTFO, man. I actually hate F-U-C-K, it though. Like, dude. Like, no, it, it actually, it actually is terrible. Like the amount of times I've seen like DP written, and it's not that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> What do you mean? Like, 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 like or double just like, penetration? Yeah, or? But it's never that. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's all like Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, come down to Dinkelman Park. It's like, why did we have to? Yeah, come play with the kids at DP. It's like, did we have to? Stop Who abbreviated it. this? Stop it. You know, Cod we Points named it CP. Like, like can CP? we not? Yeah, why couldn't CP. we go from Dan Schneider to this? That would have been a way yeah, better that segue. actually would have worked out. That would have been a way better that segue. I, that would have been a segue. But then again, I don't think what's a nice segue from, you know, from, child abuse. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, I don't, I don't think. Segue from that. We did. We, we've we twice already. We have. So I went to mass the other day. <laughs> get it? Easter soon. Shout outs to Catholicism. Shout outs to the Easter Bunny and Catholicism. So is that it? Is it just like, is it like the Catholic Church, 90s Nickelodeon, and then like, Subway in the mid two thousands is those those are the three institutions of oh no Epstein's Island is probably yeah yeah, yeah Epstein Epstein I mean I feel like Epstein's Island is like in the center like no nah, wait like, I have to reorganize it yeah that's definitely yeah it's very high what did I put a, one what was I immediately forgot what yeah I think you put was. the Catholic Church oh that's probably oh, still one Catholic Church is probably still one yeah I'm gonna put Epstein too. Yeah, All there right. you go. Yeah, All right. yeah, there's, yeah. there's the rankings, guys. Yeah, G- every gym coach is pissed they didn't make the <laughs> ranking. They're like, "Fuck, man! Come on, man! Yo, how how old was that girl? 18? Fuck, bro! Come on!" All the, all the youth league, uh, <laughs> all the youth league, little league empires, just like, "Come on!" They're all five two. <laughs> I like to think that baseball coaches are actually mad straight. Like they 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 they, they use the bats to beat up pedophiles. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, "Guys, there's another one." Uh, disclaimer: We don't think any gym teachers or baseball no. coaches do that. No, just some of them. Only lacrosse. I coaches. had a gym teacher that owned a strip club. <laughs> that's not where that's, I thought that was going, Joey. I thought that's a I thought you were about segue. to admit some Dan Schneider shit. Right yeah, now. my gym teacher had a strip club. It had like a very bad tan, so he always looked red. Real quick, guys, everybody, go around. What's the funniest name for a strip club named by a gym teacher? Go. <laughs> The, the, jo- the jock strap. The jock strap is the one thing I thought of. The 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 cup. The the cup. The um, the run. You just you, you just go in at strippers on those little things with the wheels rolling themselves oh, around oh, with drinks. Um, um, That's great, right? And one. And one. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. The wait. stripper comes on and she brings that big tent that Hit she goes the like showers. that. You know what I'm talking no, about? Whole, you know, the, you know whole, the big gym tent that you no, go like that routine, the kids run around? No, it. the whole routine. The strippers the, just dance under that. No, the whole routine's on the handle, the scooter with no, handles. No, that's what I just said. They, that's how they serve the drinks, Dylan. <laughs> they sit on that and they no, roll around on that. The badminton. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Shit. Yeah, and it, and, and they strip the on the, uh, the they strip rope. they strip on the volleyball the bro- whistle blower. Oh. They take off the net and those are the poles. You see? Uh, you like where I'm going here with this, right? Check out the jock strap. Yeah. It's my newest. I'm gonna go half half with that guy. I gotta go talk to him. I'm gonna talk some business. If he definitely still owns that place. I wonder what he's doing now. <laughs> Teaching gym. I like Teaching gym to all those strippers. No, I like to think Honeys, ladies, honeys. Imagine if we find out that like we, we, we go to like Vegas and he owns a gym themed strip club in Vegas or some shit like oh, that. Yeah. And we're just like bro. And we're in. We're like, yo, that's we're I'm missing I'm not mad. Yeah, we get top shelf with the jock strap. I'm missing pre- <laughs> Yo, where it's like, where's Jose? Oh, he went to the VIP room at the jockstrap. Yeah. At the jockstrap. 
It'd that's, be funny. It'd be funny. That's got to be a thing now. Yeah, it'd be yeah. funny if like the lunch lady from your school also started some risque business, you know, like the lunch lady burlesque or some shit like no, that. She's, she's so sloppy poke. Joe's. That'd be great. They should have gone half half on that. That'd been great. Would be fantastic. <laughs> Bobby, you're gonna go broke. I, I'm just what, the, what are these? I'm an clubs, idea machine. One of these dude. strip clubs aren't gonna work, and you're gonna go under, bro. <laughs> you're listen, gonna go bankrupt. John Taffer, I need you. To, I need you to hit me up. We could go have these on all of these. We could go 70 30. You could take the 70. I'll be happy just to have my name on the fucking sign. So, yo, you like you end up with a vet. <laughs> it's like a vet's like, I don't have no. any good ideas. Yeah. Mm. I tried looking up if there was an actual club called the Jock Strap or even an event, and there's none. I'm just that's getting, Im- I'm just getting your... images of guys in Jock Straps. That's now. Your, that's a, yeah. Doey found the jock strap. <laughs> found the it's, a jock gay, strap it's a gay man. bar this whole time. Yeah, we didn't even think about that to be oh fair. Oh my god. That's, that's a good that's a great point. I Holy mean that might be shit. that might be the That might actually it. sell better. That might yeah, that's honestly we have to do the whole workaround. And then yeah, we got it. We figured are you, are it out. Are we winning? Are you winning, son? I'm winning. All right, it's time for music recommendations in it the form is. of jam yams and slams. It is can I go first? You can go first. Though, I can please. go first. My Yam is a beautiful song. I ended up on a fucking rabbit hole one uh, measly morning. Uh, I found this band called Guac, and the song is Delio. Uh, they mix every genre of uh, like pop punk, emo, Midwest emo, noise rock, experimental rock, all together. Mm-hmm. Uh, really nice. Like imagine like the Chan. Yeah. Okay. Imagine like Chan level guitar. Gotcha. Dragons. Gotcha. But it's all underneath like millions of reverb and like fuzz bass. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's I really like good. Mm-hmm. It's good stuff. I am, I'm a fan of that. Delio. Whole album's good though. You, you did a hum like you were going to go. Okay, I don't have it on my slams. I had I went to go check if it was on my slams. Uh, I haven't been listening to music, but this week I did practice a song on guitar. And that song is called Death Cup by Mom Jeans. Death Cup? Yeah. That's it. It's oh, a chill you, song. You gotta stop doing that, man. You feel like it's gonna be a second yeah. sentence, and you no, just man, you cut it off. Lot. No, it's a good song. Yeah, it's yeah. a good song. Very chill. It's normally played on like a bass and a guitar, but I'm playing it on a good two- acoustic guitar, so it's yeah. giving a different vibe. But it's still good. Uh, my song's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, I just did the thing. Mm-hmm. Like that. I just did the thing where I was gonna. Do I really do that? Fuck you! All right, I would. Uh, I was actually gonna pick a Kanye song from that new album that he made. So, uh, but the song "Burn" is pretty fancy, but I'm not gonna pick it because okay. I heard a different song okay. from a different shit. artist, okay. Drake, named Ski Mask the Slump Guy. Oh shit! Oh. Uh, and it's called Faucet Failure. Oh, uh, it's, it's a jam. Uh, faucet Failure because I got drip or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a jam. It's a jam. All right. Good song. Did we do it? Did we we, we made a it? podcast. Did we made. Did we do it? We, we made it. We made that podcast. We made a podcast. Man, that's guys. awesome. Guys, and it didn't fall. And it didn't fall. Wow. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Mm-hmm. We really appreciate you. We don't take enough time we to love appreciate you, you, but we appreciate you, yeah. Helen. We definitely do. And we appreciate you, Doug, <laughs> and you, Jimmy, and you, Baljeet, because yep. we do have a couple of Indian viewers we out do. there. We do. We do. Shout out to them. Shout out to what Dev. We that name. And I don't know. I, I don't know why we're being racist to our big to... fan base. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Everyone, comment below your favorite child predator. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. Don't I do don't. That. I don't think anyone has one. Guys, comment below your favorite uh, Indian. There you go. <laughs> I'm a big fan of uh, of Dev Patel. My myself. I'm gonna go watch Monkey Man pretty soon. Uh, if you like this episode, you can go ahead and like this episode. Uh, if you want to subscribe to Team Joystick, you can go ahead and subscribe to Team Joystick. It'd Do it. help us. If you guys want to listen to some cool music, go ahead and check out the Jam Yen and, uh, and Slam. You guys want to subscribe to the Joystick? And uh, without further ado, you ready? up and really pretend like we're fucking all right actually bobby you're above my windpipe right now i might just come